you are using them in your sentences so how to use them so did you read about uh, those things about adjectives i mean like indefinite specifically it was a homework in the previous class nobody i'm sure nobody would have all right so nobody would have read about it so today we are having <clears throat> a lecture on adverbs like we discussed uh, adjectives in the previous class today i'm going to discuss about ad adverbs and i have uploaded the document of uh, adverbs in your class work you can also um, read it from there but we want to discuss them in detail <clears throat> specifically the conjunctive adverbs right like we have been reading these adverbs and the types of adverbs how we make adverbs i mean like with the putting the ly to the uh, an adjective to make it an adverb these are so easy to learn and like these things you can learn it from any grammar book when you pick a grammar book you will see there would be adjectives and the formation of adjectives what are the types of adjectives we are going to discuss them as well because um we are not letting them uh, to be undiscussed but see they are very easy to learn as i said that you can pick uh, any grammar book or you can google this uh, phrase uh, types of adjectives and you will see there would be a list of adjectives there would be a list of documents having all these information but the most important thing for you people is to learn the conjunctive uh, conjunctive adverbs okay conjunctive adverbs are very important to learn because uh, in most of the competitive exams or you may be uh, attempting any competitive exam you may be attempting any other exam so there if you are um, <clears throat> given a topic and asked to write an essay how to write an essay and how to use the conjunctive adverbs properly because conjunctive adverbs are mostly the transition words like if you are making one paragraph and see um you just want to connect this uh, another paragraph with this paragraph so that connecting word is is basically a, a conjunctive adverb or we can say it's a transitional verb right so but um consequently alternatively certainly finally nevertheless moreover however previously therefore these are actually the words that we have to learn where to use therefore where to use nevertheless where to use alternatively accordingly also but certainly consequently moreover and however right so we are going to discuss about them as well but let me start with the uh, with the adverbs okay so i hope you are following me you are listening to me so i'm, I'm talking about adverbs as i said that i have uploaded a document to your class work if i'm sharing the screen with you um this is definition of adverb um an adverb is a word used to add something to the meaning of a verb another adverb and an adjective it is used to modify adjectives verbs and adverbs so see the function of adverb is more like when we compare it with the adjective it's more why because it can qualify or add meaning to uh, the the meaning of uh, add something to the meaning of a verb and adverb and an adjective right so all of these verb adverbs and adjectives are basically qualified or modified by an adverb or adverb we can also say it is the intensifier or it is the qualifier it intensify the action for example if you say extremely nearly or very so it intensify that particular action sometimes we can also say with the sound we can intensify for example if somebody is aggressive and they say come here right or come here um, see the tone and somebody say come here somebody say come here right so actually the the intensity is given to the adverb the action is intensified either through um, or intonations either through uh, we can say the the tone of the voice right so they are intensified so at that uh, stage we can also say that 
uh, if we are using here, it can also intensify the action. And depending on the situation and mood of the person, it is used to modify adjectives, verbs, and adverbs. Uh, when you are talking about a situation or an event, sometimes you want to say something about it, which has not been indicated by the subject, object, or complement verb. You can do this by using an adjunct. Adjunct is basically an adverb. It's a verb or a group of words which you add to a clause when you say something about an event or situation, for example, how much it occurs or where it occurs. It's actually the situation is this. When you are having an action okay, or any event, uh, you are talking about a situation or any event. Okay? So, like, if you talk, if you want to talk about it more, or maybe you want to um, intensify that situ situation or qualify that situation or event, it is mainly not indicated by the subject, object, or complement of the in the sentence. It is actually uh, this job is done by adverb and adjectives, specifically adverbs. So we use adverbs in order to uh, talk more about um, a situation or say more about a situation or an event, but about that situation or an event in a sentence. Okay. So for example, you see she laughed quietly. So over here it is laughing uh, and this quietly is used for like you say something more about laughing. She laughed quietly. Jack is walking slowly and he's walking very slowly. So over here very slowly it is um, an adverb modifying or say something more about another adverb which is slowly. Or walking slowly it's an, um, a verb right again it's a quietly is uh, qualifying a verb I, over here in this second sentence this is uh, an adverb uh, say something more about the verb walking and she was tremendously beautiful right so beautiful is, is basically an adjective and tremendously is an adverb so it can qualify the meaning of an adjective on an adverb and a verb at the same time okay so this, this is all about an adverb. Types of adverbs, there are nine types of adverbs. There can be more types of uh, adverbs as well when you go and see and search it in the Google or pick any book of grammar. You will see there, there are a lot of, we can say, types and categories of adverbs. Today, I'm going to discuss about uh, uh, types of ad adverbs, which are only um, five, maybe five, like uh, adverb of time, adverb of manner, adverb of uh, frequency, and adverb of intensity. We are going to discuss them. So all of them, the rest of them that we uh, discuss, that there are nine types, they are actually in one way or the other way can be put in the, these four types of categories. Okay, But there are actually five main categories of or types of adverbs. We are going to discuss them in detail. The rest you can, this is a very um, good document. You can uh, learn so many things from it. There are some rules that how can you put uh, an adverb, for example, hard and hardly, both of them are adverbs, where to put hardly and how to put hard, right? So some sometime we are having an adjective um, as well as it is working as an adverb. For example, hard is an adjective and hard is an adverb as well. Fast is an adjective and fast is an adverb as well right so uh, but we can also use hardly so there are some rules which are discussed in the, this document and you will learn a lot from this document if you uh, just uh, like rules of adverb which you just read these rules of adverbs you will learn so many things okay so you can learn so many things if you read it let me try to discuss uh, what i want to discuss in this class Right. So we are talking about adverbs. As I said, that adverbs are uh, those words which qualify or say uh, something more about the meaning of an adverb, an adjective, or mainly a verb. So they are mainly verb things. They are used for to modify, uh, sorry, to qualify or say something more about an adverb. Okay. But we can also say that they uh, also modify the meaning of an adjective or another adverb as well. Okay. Now, 
if we talk about an action, especially the action verbs, a state of being can also be uh, said as, uh, for example, uh, um, can also be said okay, they can be qualified, but it's mainly the, the action verbs are qualified. Now, how they describe or modify verbs and adjectives and adverbs we discussed about it that how can there are some examples of adjectives as well there are some examples of adverbs as well like um they are very uh, the story is truly funny it's truly funny or they were very enthusiastic in their first class, right? They were very enthusiastic in their first class and she is extremely beautiful. She is extremely beautiful, right? So over here you can see, or the children were uh, the children were really bad during the movie right so over here you can see the story is truly funny funny is an adjective and truly is an adverb they were very enthusiastic enthusiastic is an adjective and extremely beautiful this is an adjective really bad an adjective and an adverb so they can qualify or modify an adjective or an adverb or the teacher had to speak loudly to be heard in the class. Okay. So loudly or speak, this is modifying or is something more about to the meaning of loud or, or to the meaning of speaking, right? Or We have so many other examples as well. Okay. But it was all about, like, it's all about the adverbs and adjectives, that how they modify the adverbs and the adjectives. When it is, as I said, that adverb is, is basically a verb thing. It is, uh, it is used mainly for the modification or description of a verb to get the meaning of a verb or adding something more to the meaning of a verb but those are actually the action verbs and how they modify or say something more about a verb there are some questions actually this this adverb is actually answering some questions in those ways we can say that it modify or um, say something more about the meaning of a verb now what is what are those things okay so it says the the, the answers are actually uh, of these questions like the question about an action that when that action happened like or the answer about where that action occurred or how that action occurred why that action occurred or i mean like under what condition that action occurred, right? Or maybe how many times how many times that action occurred or to what extent that action occurred? Is occurring or will occur? So these are the basically the answers that uh, that is given by the adverb. Okay. आप लोग मुझे 
ये मारिया और रूच कौन है आप लोग मुझे सुन रहे ये मैम सेकंड है यस मैम तो ये किस आईडी से आई हुई है इट इज रिटन आउटसाइड यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी पता नहीं मैम इसको मैं अभी यहाँ पे एडमिट कर रही हूँ लेकिन इनको कह दे कि आप किस आईडी से एंटर हो रही हैं आप पहले जब आप एंटर होते आप अपना आईडी चेक कर लिया करें कि आप जीमेल से एंटर हो रहे हैं या फिर आपकी ऑफिशियल आईडी से तो यहाँ पे चले मैं एडमिट कर रही हूँ लेकिन इसलिए हम एडमिट नहीं करते इस, इस तरह के स्टूडेंट्स को क्योंकि बाहर से स्टूडेंट्स आते हैं वो जब हम एडमिट करते तो यहाँ पे बहुत प्रॉब्लम बन जाता है ठीक है तो इस वजह से इट्स फॉर यू पीपल now i was discussing are you listening to me um, yes do you understand what i'm saying yes ma'am yes ma'am okay. okay so these are actually the adverbs answer these questions about the actions that when that action occur will occur or is occurring or happened where and how why or uh, i mean like how many times okay it's why is uh, not the 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 question but it's like under what condition theek hai or how many times we can say theek hai this is basically um why is like uh, under what condition or may maybe how many times we can say or to what extent it's it's basically the the degree or it is showing the degree or intensity showing the intensity of an action that how the what were the intensity of the action what was the intensity actually and how many times it's actually when we are counting the time or the pattern of some time okay pattern of time or uh, we can say uh, the times when we count that it's ba basically the frequency you might have read it in your uh, maybe in your physics book it's it's all about the frequency when we count the time okay when we count the time or the pattern of time it's actually the frequency so now it's very easy that there are so many types of adjectives when they answer to the question why uh, sorry when where or how and to what extent so when is is basically an uh, an adverb of time okay right when is an adverb of time how is an adverb of manner where is an adverb of place and how many times is an adverb of frequency and to what extent it's like an adverb of intensity or an adverb of degree we can also say to what degree so adverb of time adverb of manner and adverb of place adverb of frequency and adverb of degree these are the main uh, types of uh, an adverb now we are going to discuss them one by one that what is an adverb of manner what is adverb of uh, place and what is an adverb of uh, we can say um, uh, frequency or degree or time okay these are we are going to discuss them now the first thing is the adverb of manner the adverb of manner uh, is basically uh, like before going into that discussion let me talk about the position of an adverb see in in the previous class if you remember we said that there is no hard and fast rule for uh, uh, an adverb to be put either at the end of the sentence after a verb before a verb where to put them so they are actually uh, like unlike adjectives jaise hum adjectives kehte hain na ki they come uh, we put them before a noun or sometime they can come at the end of the uh, we can say uh, the sentence but in that case it it's actually um, describing a noun in a sentence theek hai 
but mainly or for most of the time adjectives can be put before a noun for which they are used theek okay? hai uh in order to qualify that particular noun but in unlike those adjectives if you go and talk about it in the previous class uh let me open that particular slide that we discussed in the previous class it was slide 4 and it was on adjectives theek okay? hai and i said that unlike um adverbs they can pop up anywhere in a sentence now see the, the position of an adjectives yahan pe kehte hain unlike adverbs which often seem capable of popping up almost anywhere in a sentence adjectives nearly always appear immediately before the noun or the noun phrase so it was a, a it was just a point that i wanted to discuss about it ke what are like how can we say that an adverb can pop up anywhere in the sentence because there is no hard and fast rule for uh, the adverbs right but some of the time if we are discussing the adverb of manner adverb of time adverb of place and frequency we can see that mostly the adverb of intensity come uh, either very near to the verb i mean before the the verb we put them before the verb in order to intensify that action for example if i say um, nearly right so in a sentence like he nearly died of uh, the accident theek okay? hai so in this sentence it's very important to see that if it is an adverb of intensity we mostly put them before a verb theek okay? hai in order to intensify that action in a proper way but we cannot say that there is hard and a fast rule that adverb of manner or adverb of intensity will always be put uh, either at the end of <coughs> the sentence or just before a verb con uh, in this way okay so we can see that adverbs of intensity or adverb of manner or adverb of place they can be put either in um, in the start of the sentence uh, i mean before the subject after the subject before a verb after the verb or at the end of the sentence okay before going into the these discussion let me talk about the position of an adverb position of adverbs that they can pop up anywhere in a sentence so there is no rule for it right uh, we can say that there are some of the uh, adverbs like the adverbs of intensity we are going to discuss them in detail that and we will see from the, their position that mainly they come near the verb okay and um, the adverb of manner we can say that when we use them for most of the time the adverb of manner come at the end of the sentence ठीक है बट वी कैन नॉट से दैट इट्स ओनली दे कैन कम एट द एंड ऑफ द सेंटेंस वी कैन हैव सम एग्जांपल्स फॉर एग्जांपल शी एंटर्ड शी एंटर्ड द रूम स्लोली ठीक है और शी एंटर्ड slowly into the room right or we can also write it in this way she slowly entered into the room entered the room or she or slowly she entered the room now see in these examples um, this adverb can pop up anywhere now see this is the first uh, in the first sentence it is at the end of the sentence over here it is just after the verb in this just before the verb and it is just before the subject or we can say in the start of the sentence 
but it's actually the position of an adverb can depend on the the way we are using it either we want to bring a curiosity in the reader's mind we have to use it in that way that's why like modification or intensifying the action is actually in the hands of a writer that how they intensify the action where to put the in the adverb in order to say something more about it okay but you can see uh, she entered the room slowly this is a very common example this is a very common sentence that we use and there is an adverb at the end but it uh, says something more about the entering or way the, the the she the way she was walking so she entered slowly into the room it's actually in order to a bit intensify it the, the entering action right she slowly entered the room it's actually these two sentences the two last sentences uh, this she slowly entered the room or slowly she entered the room it's actually uh, bringing a, a sense of curiosity in the reader's mind or intensifying that action that why she was entering so it's uh, in these uh, ways you can see that such constructions are used in storytelling or plays or uh, maybe a uh, novels or any other uh, we can say uh, narration that if you are narrating a story about somebody that she was doing these things and then she entered into the room slowly or she slowly entered the room into the room right so these are actually the way you are talking about so it's it brings curiosity in the reader mind that what she was doing so it the position of an adverb is mainly dependent on the usage that how you are using it whether you want to intensify the action more or you just want to say some the manner of an action okay so over here this slowly she entered the room it's actually bringing the curiosity in the reader's mind and it's it's working as an intensifier over here but in the first uh, example she entered the room slowly it's an adverb of manner okay so uh, there are uh, now i'm going to discuss about the the, the types of an adverb the adverb are, as we said that there are adverb of manner adverb of place and adverb of time adverb of frequency and adverb of uh, intensity um now as we discuss them you will see that what are their positions so try to focus on the position of the adverbs as well see uh, the first one is as i said uh, it's the adverb of manner now the adverb of manner is that adverb uh, which tells us about that in which manner the action occurred or is occurring or will occur right so there are examples like she speaks loudly she was uh, driving slowly you replied correctly he runs fast okay so fast is uh, is an adverb or it is an adjective as well okay we are going to discuss about it as well that there are uh, there are uh, some of the adverbs which are having the same form as an adjective but when they, we use them in sentences we see the about um, on the basis of their function we say that it is an adverb and it is an adjective right so we are having loudly correctly uh, slowly uh, um uh he solved the question easily so we are having easily or listen to me carefully so we are having carefully as an adverb slowly correctly easily carefully or fast okay so he runs fast it's actually an adverb and an adverb of manner now the adverb of uh, place adverb of place uh, tells us about the place of an action or where the action occurred or occur or will occur like for example here there near somewhere nowhere outside ahead on the top at some place or things like that so when we say that it's like it is telling us about the uh, the place of a, an action that where that action occurred it's actually an adverb of place so we say here there outside near somewhere nowhere outside again i am written on the top 
at some place or somewhere. So he will come here, or the children are playing outside. He was standing near the wall. Uh, they were uh, flying kites on the top of the hill, and um, she went upstairs. We can also say upstairs. Upstairs, downstairs. Okay, these are the adverbs. Now, adverb of time. Adverb of time tells us about the time of an action, like now, then, soon, tomorrow, yesterday, today, tonight, again, early, and things like that. Okay, so you see, um, uh, he got up early in the morning. Uh, he wakes up early in the morning. She is uh, still waiting for her. Now, we have still. We can also say yet. Okay. Uh, we are having uh, now. Then. Soon. Tomorrow. Yesterday, today, tonight, early, etc. These are adverb of time. Now, still and yet, yet are and still, both of them are adverb of. Uh, we can say uh, adverb of time, but yet it's a conjunction by birth, right? Still is an adverb by birth. Like uh, if we see still is an adverb and yet is, um, is it's an, a conjunction by birth, okay? And uh, you must know that where we use yet, it's like the coordinating conjunction and they are actually uh, conjunction, uh, but still is an adverb of time. Uh, we can say uh, it's an adverb of uh, a time by birth. Yet is used when when there is a frustration in the time. I mean, it is used in a uh, sorry, not in a frustration, but we can say it's it's used in a positive sense when we say yet. Okay, because the time is not started or it's starting. Okay, still is when the time uh, when the work is started and it's. it's uh, uh, been a time or it's been a while but uh, it's not completed right so we use still so there is a frustration frustration in the tone of, or maybe the voice of the person that still he is working on this project or uh, yet he is working on this project i mean like that he has started that uh, project uh, maybe today or he is starting that okay or still is like he has already started on that project and it's been a while and he's he hasn't completed that work so still is like the meaning is there is a frustration you know now then soon tomorrow yesterday today tonight and early all of them are adverbs of time and it's very easy to use them in your sentences right so and then we are having um, the adverb of frequency okay in the adverb of frequency, there are, like we can say uh, that at how many times, or it tells us how many times or how often the action occurs. For example, daily, sometimes, monthly, yearly, seldom, usually, rarely, again, ever, generally, frequently, never, twice, thrice, and usually, right? So it's usually twice, Rise. So it tells us the pattern of the time. Okay. Or uh, we can say how often or how many times that action occurs. So it, it can be on daily or it can be yearly, it can be monthly. It's ever or generally. Okay, it's seldom, never, uh, frequently, sometimes, okay. 
okay so he goes to school daily uh, she never smokes or we can also say that uh, seldom is is very like it gets very uh, near to never right so as uh, barking dog seldom bite um the employees are uh, paid or the employees are paid monthly or the employees are paid monthly they are paid yearly they are paid uh, weekly right or mm, they are given assignments on week uh, weekly uh, right or we can say um, they are uh, sometime um, they do not uh, perform well okay so uh, these are actually the adverb of uh, frequency that how how many times or how often the action occurs okay so i think it's it's easy now adverb of uh, intensity or adverb of degree are those adverbs which tells us about the level to what extent or how much an action occurs for example almost most much quite really so to very etc so there are um, like whenever we use uh, adverb of intensity how to use them or what is the position and what is the difference in so and what is the difference in to what is the difference in very and things like that almost most much quite where we use them and what is the position it's actually the adverb of intensity is used very much or adverb of manner bahut zyada jo use hota hai it's all about the adverb of manner and the adverb of intensity so um, they are actually looked as adverbs but the rest of them like now then and here and there we do not look on it we do not focus more on it it's actually the the focus uh, in the adverbs when we read the adverbs it more goes on the adverb of manner and the adverb of intensity right because frequency is also uh, it's a time or it's an adverb of time eventually but it's like it shows just the pattern of time or how many times or uh, we can say how often that action occurs so but actually it's time okay now adverb of intensity as i said that it shows us that how much an action occurs or to what extent that action occurs so we are having almost most much so to very really nearly quite etc okay there are so many now i so want to go home right i so want to go home now her daughter is quite fat uh the accident victim nearly died or we can also say he nearly died from his injuries ठीक है uh the daughter is quite fat i so wanted to go home these are actually if you see it is um we can also use it as the accident victim nearly died or the victim nearly died of his injuries okay so over here you see if you notice the position of an this adverb particularly the adverb of intensity i so wanted to go home so it is put um after the the subject or before the verb or maybe just after the verb okay just after the verb so her daughter is quite fat 
ठीक है ही नियरली डाइड फ्रॉम हिज इंजरीज एंड द विक्टम नियरली डाइड ऑफ हिज इंजरीज सो इट इज इट इज पुट आइदर बिफोर द वर्ब और आफ्टर द वर्ब ठीक है फॉर मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम इट इज पुट बिफोर अ वर्ब और आफ्टर द वर्ब इन इन ऑर्डर टू इंटेंसिफाई द एक्शन ठीक है सो दीज आर द एडवर्ब्स ऑफ इंटेंसिटी नाउ आई वांट यू पीपल टू टेल मी अबाउट वेरी वी यूज दीज एडवर्ब्स so much theek hai um very commonly we use them or these are the very common uh, we can say adverbs that we use them so and we say to or we say very these are the adverbs that we use them and all these three tells us uh, the intensity or it shows us the intensity so is also an intensity i so wanted to go home and two is also the intensity where is also the intensity so all these three are actually used in the same sense um, if we see them for the first time but where we use them theek hai how we use them where to use to where to use so and where to use why where so could you please tell me or can you please discuss with me that where to use so and to and very because it's it's your um, class work now just discuss it with yourself i'm giving you 3 minutes and then we will be discussing so to very and their examples as well okay so i'll be right back after 3 minutes please uh think about it we will be discussing them so i hope it is clear now yes ma'am
Assalamualaikum. Uh, Abdul Rahman, class khatam ho gayi hai? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Now, could you please yes. talk about two very and so Hamza, you are not listening to me, I guess, because you are asking about the class that is it ended. No, I give you uh, some task that you have to talk about very as uh, an adverb to as an adverb and so as an adverb and where to use them. Now, can you please talk about it? Who could be the volunteer? Uh, uh, Ma'am, difference uh, between when and who is uh, when we say. Question of Khalif could find for me. Jaise ki he is very happy. So very hmm. use kiya gaya expression would find for me. Kya aur bahut khush hai. Hmm. और इसी तरह टू जो यूज किया गया कि किसी बंदे के बारे में रिव्यू दिया जाए जैसे कि ही इज टू ही वाज टू स्लो ड्यूरिंग द रेस तो टू बताया गया कि वो यूज किया गया कि बहुत स्लो था एक रिव्यू दिया गया बंदे की तरफ से हम्म हम ये भी कह सकते हैं कि ही वाज वेरी स्लो ड्यूरिंग मैम वेरी जो है नॉर्मल एम्फसिस के लिए इस्तेमाल हो सकता है फिर उसके बाद सो जो है हम अगर कुछ ज्यादा एम्फेसाइज करना चाहते हैं उसके लिए इस्तेमाल हो सकता है और जो टू है मतलब किसी चीज को ज्यादा इंटेंसिफाई करके बयान करना है तो उसके लिए यूज कर सकते हैं ऑल ऑफ देम आर एक्चुअली इंटेंसिफायर्स हमस ऑल ऑफ देम आर इंटेंसिफायर्स लाइक सो इज यूज्ड फॉर इंटेंसिफाई एन एक्शन टू इज यूज्ड फॉर इंटेंसिफाइंग लेकिन कुछ ऐसे हैं कि देयर आर सम एक्सट्रा आई मीन लाइक द डिग्री कुछ थोड़ा सा ज्यादा इसको इंफेसाइज कुछ थोड़ा कम इंफेसाइज करते हैं बट सम ऑफ देम आर नेगेटिव अब्दुल रहमान कुड यू प्लीज टॉक मैम व्हेन वी यूज वेरी इट्स मीन इट इज डिफिकल्ट बट नॉट इंपॉसिबल बट व्हेन वी यूज टू देन इट्स मीन इट इज इंपॉसिबल टू डू समथिंग we can also uh, we can also use to in in case of uh, we can say when we bring negativity in something when there is a positivity we use very and it's a very common example of intensity there, though there is intensity but it's like emphasis okay so the emphasis is there the intensity is there but it's a little one in um, and when we use so it's again we are using it in the same way the way we use very लेकिन थोड़ा उसमें डिफरेंस ये है कि वेरी इज अट थोड़ा सा ज्यादा एम्फोसाइज करते हैं सो वेरी से इफ वी कंपेयर सो विद वेरी ठीक है एंड टू इज यूज्ड इन नेगेटिव सेंसेस मोस्टली वी आर व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट नेगेटिविटी सो इफ वी यूज देम विद अ पॉजिटिव वर्ड स्टिल इट विल बी अ वेरी नेगेटिव सेंस इट विल बी आयरोनिकल इफ वी यूज इट विद अ पॉजिटिव वर्ड्स is not good construction but if we are using it he is too kind it means that the person is not actually a kind person or a nice person okay it's actually you are ironical at that time okay but we use adjectives with all those uh, sorry this too with all those adjectives which are actually negative in their senses for example if we say uh, it's too expensive it's too tired or too difficult so it it is when when the words carries a very negative feeling with the, themselves it's normally we use to with those words okay but if we are using it with some positive words like kind and nice and 
And those adjectives, it's actually uh, when we mean something else, which is our ironical language, uh, uh, that we use. Karte. Jase, um, our teacher would always use this thing that, uh, oh my God, you are too nice, right? So it was actually ironical. We won't uh, perform some assignments and uh, activities in the class. He would say, you are too nice, too, too kind, right? So it's actually, it was ironical something. Okay, so um, we use do with all those adjectives uh, or all those verbs, okay, which are um, having um, a very negative sense or which carries a very negative feelings with themselves, like expensive, tired, and difficult, and things like that. Okay, so I hope it is clear now. Now, there are some other things that you have to see as well. For example, if we say uh, it is too hot to touch and it is so hot to touch okay so so and to both of them are as intensified the way we say very okay but very thoughts are normal hai. it's a very normal um, adverb that we use in um, in order to intensify the actions okay now we say it it's too hot to touch and it is so hot to touch. Okay. Uh, it is so hot to It is too hot today. Or it is so hot today. What is the meaning of these four sentences? Please tell me and which one is incorrect. There is an incorrect sentence. So, hmm. Kon bol rahe? Hamza Javed, you are saying, or Hamza Ejaz, you are saying something. Nasir Abbas, kuch nahi bolna. Behram Khan, Muhammad Afaq. Miss, it is so Okay. When we use this so and when it is a negative sense, it carries the uh, we can say sometimes we say it's too hot to touch. Okay. So it's actually too is can take uh, the preposition to with it. Okay. But uh, so is is actually an adverb which do not take to preposition with it. It has to, uh, like this particular conjunction that, that is used. And when it says something about negativity, okay, negativity ke baare mein agar ye bolta hai, okay, if we are using it in a sense where there is a negativity, it takes that with it. Okay, so it's, it's a very incorrect sentence if we say it is so hard to touch we will say it is so hard that one cannot touch it. Okay? For example, if we say the music was so beautiful, I went into the room to hear more. So over here, it's, uh, it's a positive. So there is no use of to and that and things like that. But uh, if we say the music was so loud that I went inside to ask them to turn it off. Okay, so when it is used in a negative adjective, we use that with it. Okay, so it carries the conjunction that with it. Sorry, uh, not the conjunction, like in a so, kya bolte? Uh, relative pronoun that. Okay, that is used when. So the music was so beautiful. 
I went into the room to hear more. The music was so loud that I went inside to ask them to turn it off. And in the second sentence, if we say it is so hot today and it is too hot today, in the name of the one is a seasonal uh, thing. Okay? If we say it is so hot today, it means that it's summer season and it's hot. Okay? And if we say it is still hot today, it means that it's not a summer season, but it's still hot today. So there is a negativity. Okay? So um, I hope it is clear now that where we use so to and very, uh, if you want to learn more about it, you can have you can look into the document that I have uploaded. You can also search it in, in Google uh, that how we use to so very because these are very important to learn. Now, the the last but not the least, right? There is like the formation of adverb is very easy. Okay, आप अपने खुद से पढ़ ले कि formation of adverbs कैसे हम form करते. So see uh, in the formation of adverbs, uh, there are uh, like uh, if we put ly, ily uh, to the adjectives, we mainly form adverbs. So it's very easy. We have been reading these things since our very first classes in the close schools. So I'm not going to discuss them. Uh, it's the last but not the least. Uh, it's a very important topic that I want to discuss with you. And it's actually the transition words. Just if we have conjunctive adverbs, they are mainly adverbs. But they can also work as conjunctions at times when we put them with semicolon or a colon or with a, uh, we can say, um, a comma. Okay? So, when we put punctuation marks, lagate, it can also work as a linking verb. Okay? It can aid two um, clauses uh, to make a single sentence. So, over there, it can, it can be a conjunctive adverb. Okay? So, what are these conjunctive adverbs? They can work as transitional words as well. And they are very important to learn because in, in the writing uh, or if you want to have a very compact writing, not a very uh, a crispy writing, uh, you have to learn these uh, conjunctive adverbs. Okay? Because continuity in the sentences. If we are um, constructing sentences, you will be needing these conjunctive adverbs to bring continuity in the text, uh, to bring, uh, we can say, um, coherence in the text. That you unity or coherence writing in the text. So these are very important. We will be discussing these things while when we start the process of writing. Writing and it's like before discussing uh, the paragraph writing. Okay, paragraph writing. When we discuss karenge, how we can bring coherence in the paragraph, it's very important to know about these conjunctive adverbs and the transition words. Okay, our idea hai, if we start with one idea and we want to try to connect another idea to this one, so our connecting word hai, connecting word hai, that is actually the uh transition words or we can call them conjunctive adverbs okay so conjunctive adverbs are very important to learn okay conjunctive adverbs are okay they are like however or we can say uh entirely Entirely, extremely, hardly, just. ठीक है. ये हमारे पास थोड़े से intensity के verb है. Entirely, extremely, hardly, and just. There is one thing. Uh, so you should know that hard can be an, a, an adverb or it can be an adjective and it's like we can also use hardly as well. Okay. So hard or there is no fastly. Fastly, koi ek adverb hamare paas nahi hai. We say fast, right? So there is fast is an adverb and it's an adjective as well. Okay. And it's an adjective as well so far uh, uh, he runs fast or this is a fast car okay so over here both of them are working as an adjective and adverb at the same time they are having the same structure okay 
कंजंक्टिव एडवर्ब को अभी मैं डिस्कस कर रही हूँ लेकिन लेट मी टॉक अबाउट इट हार्डली एंड हार्ड हार्ड इज एक्चुअली ही वर्क हार्ड ठीक है हम ऐसा यूज नहीं करते कि ही वर्क हार्डली वी वुड से ही वर्क हार्ड ठीक है और हार्डली इज यूज इन द पैटर्न ऑफ टाइम ठीक है इट्स एक्चुअली वेन वी यूज इट फॉर द टाइम और वेन देर इज अड इज यूज वेन इट इज फॉर समथिंग स्टिफनेस रफनेस इसके लिए हम जब यूज करते हैं और मे बी वी कैन से समथिंग जैसे ही वर्क हार्ड राइट सो इट्स लाइक वेन यू इट्स एक्चुअली द टॉकिंग अबाउट द वर्किंग ठीक है और हार्डली इज यूज एज अ टाइम पैटर्न ठीक है ठीक है सो हार्डली वी एक एडवर्ब है एंड हार्ड भी एक एडवर्ब है बट दे आर यूज इन अ डिफरेंट सेंस ठीक है सो हार्डली इज यूज इन द टाइम सेंस और अ टाइम पैटर्न सेंस एंड हार्ड इज यूज इन द वी कैन से इट्स इन द स्टेफनेस और हार्ड और स्ट्रेंथ और समथिंग लाइक दैट ठीक है and fast there is no fastly as an adverb there is no fastly as an adjective we are having fast and both of them can be an adverb and an adjective theek hai ye hamare paas kuch uh, they, these were actually the adverbs of intensity conjunctive adverbs are those adverbs which can be used as conjunctions and it can be used as uh, adverbs theek hai they are actually adverbs but they can be used as conjunctions i mean like linking verbs theek hai so accordingly accordingly alternatively alternatively certainly consequently uh previously moreover however nevertheless uh um, therefore instead okay certainly also okay accordingly generally instead okay these are conjunctive adverbs ठीक है एंड हाउ वी यूज दिम इन सेंटेंसेस फॉर एग्जांपल वी प्लेन टू लीव अर्ली इन द मॉर्निंग वी प्लेन टू लीव अर्ली इन द मॉर्निंग देयर फोर वी विल गो टू बेड अर्ली नाउ कॉमा देयर फोर we will go to bed early now there are so many examples of conjunctive adverbs that how can we use those conjunctive adverbs for example um consequently certainly alternatively accordingly however nevertheless therefore and instead now have you ever tried to use these uh, conjunctive adverbs in your sentences okay just say for example uh, moreover is used as when we eat something more theek okay? hai when we uh, there is an idea and we want to discuss another idea we use more ever however uh, is used when uh, we use one idea but there is another contrasting idea theek okay? hai uh, or we can say the opposite of that idea however is used as when we like moreover can be used in the meaning of and we use and as a conjunction okay in order to aid 
uh, another idea to add another uh, fragment to add another noun okay or another name or another thing however is used uh, when we have one idea but we want to bring another idea but that idea is actually the opposite of it or we can say it's the contrasting idea okay now <clears throat> there are examples of however that how can we use however in sentences okay the engineers claimed that the bridge was safe the bridge was safe however they were still not prepared to risk crossing is crossing okay so over here you see um the the engineers claim that the bridge um was safe however they were uh, they were still not prepared to risk crossing so over here it's like a contrasting idea okay it was safe but still they were not crossing it because uh they didn't want to take the risk okay so the engineers claimed uh, that the bridge was safe however they were not uh, still prepared to take the risk so it's like when the, the another idea or after the conjunctive adverb however i mean when we have another idea that idea is actually the opposition or it's the opposite idea or we can say it's the contrasting idea uh, to the idea or the sentence that comes before that conjunctive adverb i mean have ever okay so these are the uh, sentences for example we can also say um, the results remain consistent however the data were analyzed okay the results now over here in this sentence see in this particular sentence the engineers claimed that the bridge was safe however they were still not prepared to risk crossing so in this particular sentence this however is working as a conjunction okay because it is linking two sentences they were still not prepared to risk crossing and the engineers claimed that the bridge was safe okay but we use them we can also use them as a simple adverb for example the result remained consistent okay the results remained consistent or consistent however the data were analyzed right so see over here in this sentence the result remain consistent however the data were analyzed so it is working as an adverb but still we can also say that in this sentence the engineers claimed that the bridge was safe however over here is working as a conjunctive adverb and over here it is working as a a conjunction sorry um, an adverb but we can also say that the however is a conjunctive adverb in this sentence also the results remain consistent however the data were analyzed it can also be called as a conjunctive adverb because they are uh, it is uh, usually linking two um, uh, sen two sentences the results remain consistent the data were analyzed and it is joined by one word that is however okay so i hope it is clear now i'll be asking you people in the next class it should not be the same case as i ask about adjectives and you weren't ask 
telling me anything about adjectives okay so in the next class i'll be asking about conjunctive adverbs and it's very important for you people to learn at this stage kyunki iske baad aapko koi mauka nahi milne wala to learn conjunctive adverbs is very important for you people it's for the paragraph writing for essay writing for construction of the sentences you have to learn the conjunctive adverbs okay because they are used as adverbs and they can be used as a linking verbs as well okay तो बहुत जरूरी है आप लोगों के लिए टू लर्न दिस कंजंक्टिव एडवर्ब्स। सो आई होप इट इज क्लियर नाउ इज इट क्लियर नाउ यस सो इट्स द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ एवरी सी आर लेट मी टेक द अटेंडेंस ओवर हियर and let me stop the recording as well